There we go. <laughs> I pushed the button, but it didn't take. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday night. Uh, this is a, an amateur radio beginners class. Uh, if you've uh, been interested in amateur radio, uh, even, even mildly, um, and uh, wanted to know how it works and how you get your license and, and what happens, this might be a good uh, uh, video for you to stick around and, and take a look at. Uh, my name is Gary. A ham radio call sign W4EEY, uh, Whiskey for Echo Echo Yankee. Uh, and uh, we're here uh, with a group of, when I last checked, uh, it was uh, 14 people uh, in the uh, Zoom classroom with us. Uh, not everyone has their, their video turned on at the moment, uh, but we're so happy uh, to have them here with us. And an undetermined number watching us live on a YouTube live stream. Um, I am by myself here, and here's that button again. Let's push that. Okay, good, there we go. Um, I'm by myself here in the studio tonight, so I can't respond on the chat. So um, moderate yourselves, please, in the YouTube chat. <laughs> Tonight we're just going to be covering um, uh, what we call chapter one, uh, which is the introduction, and by chapter we refer to this book. Uh, this is the American Radio Relay League's license manual for the technician level, uh, and it's the, the beginning uh, amateur radio um, license level. Uh, this is the fifth edition. Uh, and this is the most current manual. If you have a fourth edition or something like that, the knowledge inside it is good, but the questions that uh, you have to answer on your multiple choice test uh, would be different because it's a different question pool. And they're similar, but uh, there's, there's updates. So this is the one you want, the fifth edition. Uh, so tonight we're going to be uh, just introducing ourselves, uh, getting to know one another, uh, working through some technical problems, um, and um, uh, then after we uh, learn about each other, then I have a very brief presentation. There's only 33 slides in my entire PowerPoint presentation tonight. Sometimes it'll be like 200 and some. Uh, so uh, it's going to be an easy night. We're going to get out early tonight uh, and um, uh, just get acclimated uh, to the Zoom classroom uh, and uh, to this this style of learning. So I'm, I'm so very happy uh, to have you all with us uh, here tonight. So as I mentioned, chapter one, amateur radio, the best hobby in the world. Of course, I'm, I'm not at all prejudiced in that regard. So there's me, we'll be doing some introductions, uh, W4EEY, the main instructor. My uh, colleague in uh, crime, Dave Ivey, is uh, with us here tonight virtually. Uh, so uh, Dave will introduce uh, himself and then we'll, we'll come back to you all. Uh, and, and here, uh, what got you interested uh, in ham radio? Me, I'm an old timer. Uh, I've, uh, it seems now, been around forever. I was first licensed back in 1969 uh, as a, a novice uh, ham radio operator. I was 16, so if you do the math, I'm 69 right now. I'll be 70 in November. Um, and I had a ball, it was in uh, junior high school, uh, we could only do Morris code. We could only go uh, with 75 watts of, of power. But I made contacts all around the United States, uh, and it, it was great fun. But did I mention it was in junior high school? Uh, then novice licenses were only good for two years, and you had to then upgrade to the general class. Uh, and to get the general class, you had to go to the FCC field office. I had other things going on. Girls, maybe? I, but anyway, so junior high school, high school, I was still interested in electronics. Uh, I was still interested in shortwave radio. I was a shortwave listener. Uh, but I let my license lapse. Um, but I was uh, very lucky uh, where I grew up in Midland, Michigan. Uh, they had electronics training uh, available at uh, one of the high schools there. And so for five days a week, two hours a day, uh, for two years, I was able to uh, learn electronics. Thank you, Mr. Zelensky, my instructor, uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, that gave me a leg up. Uh, before I graduated high school, I had my FCC second class uh, radio telephone commercial license uh, and um, went on to uh, study uh, broadcasting and cinematic arts at Central Michigan University, uh, graduated from there, and then began working uh, in industrial television, uh, then in, in broadcast to television and radio, uh, both uh, non-commercial uh, public radio and uh, commercial uh, broadcasting, till ultimately in 1988, 
uh, I joined the Voice of America. Uh, VOA is one of those big shortwave broadcasters. Remember, I used to listen to shortwave. Well, VOA is America's international broadcaster based out of Washington, D.C., your tax dollars at work. And I worked uh, for VOA for 20 years uh, and uh, was stationed overseas as a foreign service officer. I'd gotten my license back, I forgot to mention this, in the mid-1980s. In about 1985, uh, I was relicensed in Saginaw, Michigan, uh, and uh, walked into uh, to the test session with no license, walked out with an advanced license. So I was pretty happy about that. Um, but uh, ham radio has been an essential part of my career. Uh, it, it's helped make me uh, who I am. Uh, and so when I retired from the Voice of America in 2008 and came here to upstate South Carolina, um, after a few years uh, of inactivity, I said, I want to get back active again. And then later on, I, somebody come up to me, came up to me and said, well, Gary, um, I'm in this prepper group, uh, and would you be able to teach ham radio for the prepper group? Okay. That was... Dave reminded me, we've been teaching together uh, for about six years now. Uh, that was uh, two or three years before then, so um, coming up on an anniversary. Anyway, um, taught uh, classes then for the Greer Amateur Radio Club uh, in person, then COVID hit, then we discovered this, this virtual training environment, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, uh, we've been able to uh, continue on in this, and uh, we're making it our full-time gig uh, here in a, a brand new uh, studio that uh, just got built uh, in, in the past uh, year. Uh, very happy to be here, uh, and uh, very happy to share the fun of ham radio with you all. So that's my story so far. You'll, you'll hear a lot more about me. Uh, but what I'd like to do now is uh, turn it over to uh, my colleague in crime, uh, Dave, uh, Dave Ivey, if you'd go ahead and unmute uh, and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Yeah. Um, I am, it, it, in the event that Gary can't do a class, if he gets a sore throat or loses his voice or whatever, I'll, I'll be the backup for the technician class. But normally Gary does the uh, the technician on, on his own and even does the switching. I'm actually a little bit more available now, so I, I can help a little bit. We co-teach, uh, alternate back and forth on the general and the extra class. But my story, I was licensed in the late 60s as a teenager. And um, that was a, what they called the novice license at the time. We were required to pass a five word per minute Morse code test, which isn't required for any ham license anymore. And um, I moved on from there to the general class and then the advanced class. I've kind of been in electronics my whole life. Um, after about, uh, well, when, when life started happening, got married and all of that, my license had elapsed and um, it was out of it for about 20 years. But um, I, I got back in in about uh, 2018 and have been very active ever since. So I was with Motorola for three years. Uh, three or 30 years I was with Motorola in the Chicagoland area uh, and around the Midwest had three fascinating careers there probably the most interesting to most of you would be the cellular industry I, I was involved in turning up the first 25 or 30 cellular systems all over the United States when that industry first got started been in Greenville South Carolina now for about 18 years and uh, we really love it down there uh, one of our happy experiences was seeing the snow disappearing in the rearview window as we left Illinois, <laughs> headed for South Carolina when we finished up there. So um, that's a little bit of, of the background. Gary and I have been teaching since December of 2016. Uh, he asked me if I wanted to participate and we jumped right into teaching an extra class a, a month or two later and we jumped right into the deep end, but it, it went well. And we've been doing this uh, together ever since. My uh, Early days, uh, when I got back in, uh, active in ham radio, I was very active in digital, uh, FT8. And since that time, I've become involved with parks on the air, summits on the air, and I've been doing some uh, CW contesting as well. Uh, kind of wanted to get back into that. CW is still alive and well, or CW Morse code um, in the ham radio world. Uh, not required, but it's just something fun to do if you want to get into it. And uh, my personal motivation uh, in being involved with this is I, I just love to see people do things that they weren't sure that they could do. I know in the chat uh, prior uh, this evening, 
uh, some people were saying, well, they were a little bit nervous because they don't have a technical background. Well, Gary and I just delight in helping people through those kinds of things. So that's my story. I shall. There, there I am. Okay, very good. Now I want to do something fancy. I want to go over here and I want to push that button. And yes, Dave, you and I are both on the screen at the same time. <laughs> kind of nifty. Okay, so this is the most interesting part of the entire uh, evening tonight is to hear from you all. Uh, and I have a list on a monitor over here of participants in our, our Zoom meeting. And I'm going to ask, uh, ask Alex uh, Filatov, is it, uh, if you would unmute and uh, just to say hey, uh, introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, and uh, what got you interested in ham radio, Alex? Hi everyone, my name is uh, Alex Filadov. Uh, I'm based out of Northern Virginia, so a bit up from you in South Carolina. Today is ridiculously hot here, 98 Fahrenheit, so we are dying here up. Um, I'm related to the ham radio, so probably from the days I was very young in the beginning of 90s, and uh, my father uh, had started radio and he was talking these stories constantly, how was, he was playing with that. But unfortunately, I have never started exploring that for myself, and that's the first encounter for me trying to introduce myself to ham radio. Well, we'll get you introduced, uh, hopefully properly, uh, get you uh, licensed and get you on the air. Uh, and uh, I think you'll do just fine. All right, uh, next up is April Walker. April, if you would go ahead and unmute and come on in. Hi, I'm April. Uh, I'm here with my son, Alex, today. And uh, I live in Colorado, um, originally from California. And how I got into or introduced to it was through my prepper group back in 2019. Um, and they all went and got their licenses and I didn't. So, <laughs> so now I'm, you know, buckling down here and trying to learn this. And um, I also am really into weather. And um, I've met with the groups out here and they have a couple of weather people. So it was pretty cool to see that. And that's something I'm interested in being a part of. Super. Well, thank you very much, April. Great to make your acquaintance. Uh, okay, next up is Becky, Becky D. If you wouldn't mind unmuting and just say hello. Hello, um, my name is Becky Doyle. Um, I live in Florida and um, I wanted to get into the ham because of things going on in the world and that, and we live in Florida, we always have hurricanes and stuff, and I'd like to know and be prepared on that end, I could at least listen, but then I thought, well, I can't talk on the radio if I don't have my license, so that's why I'm here trying to learn. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We're going to get you there, Becky. You'll do just fine. All right. Next up is Brandon. Brandon Fry. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Brandon. I'm an architect out of central Montana. And I have been interested in radio scanning for many, many years. It was one of the first things I bought with my high school job was a police scanner. I live out by an airport, so any opportunity to listen in on communications I value, and now is my time to begin to learn to communicate. Thank you. Oh, wonderful, Brandon. Well, yeah, like I say, I started as a listener, uh, shortwave, and then yeah, I had scanners and, and too, so that, that that's fun. Excellent. All right, um, from last night, Captain Pat was with us last night. Uh, Pat, you wanna come on in and just say hello to this group? Yeah, good evening. Uh, you know, what you said yesterday, Gary, about uh, age and memory kind of hit home. <laughs> when you got to write, you got to have crib notes to tell people who you are and where you've been. Well, just make uh, it brief tonight, Pat. Okay. Coming at you from Vancouver, Washington. Uh, I already have all three of my licenses, for, and I got them through these classes, it, just like we're going through now. I'm doing it to uh, learn a little bit more about the teaching techniques that Gary and Dave use. And uh, I want to work with the youth and try to get uh, some of the kids uh, 
in on this. My grandson's sitting in with me, mm -hmm. and uh, he wants to get his license. So uh, we're on to it. That's my story. Excellent. And what's your uh, grandson's name? My name's Riley. Hi, Riley. Great to meet you. Make your acquaintance. And yeah, we want to work you on the air one day, okay? All right. All right. Super. Thank you, Pat. Appreciate it. Yep. Carol Scott, you're up next, please. Hi. Um, let's see. Um, well, basically, I just wanted to get my license once I realized that it would give me a hobby that could be very useful in the times that we seem to be entering. And I kind of came across this by accident. You know, I've been around it a lot here and there in life, but never took it as something I could do. But um, then there's a woman in the group we hang out with uh, named Connie, who's just got her extra, who decided she would encourage a group of us. So I was part of that. And I very hurriedly got my technician license, but all the information didn't really get in. So that's why I want to do this. So I'm doing the general as you know, and I'm actually in a very relaxed mood because I've already got this license. Now I can actually learn it. So I'm really pleased. So thank you. You feel comfortable, feel right at home. You're in a great group. Uh, happy to have you with us uh, here tonight. All right, Daniel W3FEW from Pennsylvania. You're up next, please. Yeah, hi, uh, my name's Daniel. Um, I, uh, I already have um, my license, uh, but my uh, my two kids have been interested in ham radio. Uh, my son got his technician uh, earlier this uh, earlier this summer, and now uh, my daughter here uh, wants to to take the class. Do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Clara, and I'm in fourth grade. Well, Clara, uh, welcome. We're so happy to have you with us. Excellent. All right, moving on to Danny Podesta. Danny, you're up next. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm coming out of uh, Reno, Nevada, and that is northern Nevada, not Las Vegas. Las Vegas is in the south. That's Sin City. <laughs> we live in the cool district. <laughs> anyway, I'm really uh, encouraged and excited to get my, uh, my license. Um, I'm very concerned with the condition of the world, and we go back and forth to a, a Nevada city, which has a high fire danger. And so I want to be connected, and I also want to be connected with my family, which is about an hour and a half from where we are. And so I also, on a side note, I'm interested in, in learning about comms so I can use my radio to be able to go out and plink with my weapon and, and talk with the people that I'm doing that with. And, you know, semi kind of tactical stuff, and I want it just to be plugged in in case there's an emergency and my cell doesn't work out. I just would rather be prepared. And so, yeah, I've got my radio that I don't know how to use, and I'm looking forward to uh, using it and getting to know how to do it and getting licensed. Thank you. Wonderful, Danny. Well, you're in a, a good company here. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, preppers uh, in the group. Uh, happy to have you with us. All right, now Angela and James Wood, also identified as iPhone 2. Um, would you go ahead and unmute and just say uh, hello? Hi, my name is Angela, and uh, my husband's not doing this. It's just me. <laughs> okay. And um, I'm trying to learn so that I can get my license. I'm in the group with Carol and Becky. We are all in the same group, and we're trying to learn so we can get our license and keep in touch and keep an eye on what's going on in the world. Wonderful. Well, great to have you with us. We have two Jasons uh, with us tonight. So first, uh, Jason Bogue, am I pronouncing it correctly? Yes. Please come on in. You able to hear me? Yes. You guys able to hear me? Yes. Okay. My name's Jason. I'm from uh, Indiana, and uh, I've worked emergency services uh, my whole life. Uh, currently, as a police officer, uh, firefighter, and medic. Also, a member of the Indiana Guard Reserve. Uh, former Coast Guard uh, guy. I'm not a prepper, unfortunately. <laughs> well, but you're on the front line. Thank you for your service. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Uh, all right, super. Jason number two, that's a Jason Pickering. If you would go ahead and unmute and come in. 
Hey, good evening, everybody. I am, uh, me and Jason have known each other for, oh, I'd say almost 25 years or so. Uh, we're right around the corner from each other. I currently am an emer the emergency preparedness manager for a local trauma center here in Indiana, and we're trying to incorporate him into our emergency operations center for the event of no communications whatsoever. So that's why I'm in the class. That and I'm a, kind of a, been a radio geek all my career, so. Wonderful. Well, glad to have you with us. And uh, yeah, we actually taught a, a three-day tech class uh, at one of the local hospitals. Uh, that was too short. Uh, 10 weeks is just about right. So uh, yeah, glad to have you with us. All right, somebody identified uh, JIMC1, if I'm looking at this correctly. Does that ring a bell? Is, if that's you, go ahead and unmute. Did I unmute? You did. Okay, my name is Jim Costanzo. Uh, I just recently retired to live in upstate New York. Ham radio has been something for the last 40 years that's interested me, and I have the time. I'd love to learn how to get involved and play around and maybe even get my, my children radios just to bother them. <laughs> well, there's a motivation for you. Okay, great. Well, great. Exactly. Great to have you with us. Um, all right, now, uh, Kirk, uh, and I'm not sure why the video didn't update, but Kirk, uh, come on in and uh, uh, say hello to the group. Yeah, hello. This is Kirk Van Blarkham. I appreciate you not trying to mangle my last name. So I'll say <laughs> it, it looks intimidating, but it's not too bad. I'm calling in from tropical Medina, Ohio. I've been uh, interested in ham radio for most of my life. My grandfather was a ham back in the day, and I used to sit with him up in, up in the attic with his old tube radio and, and listen in around the world. So my, my goal is to uh, play, pay homage to him, and I want to get his call sign uh, when I get my technical license so I can use his call sign again. Very good, yep. My call sign is uh, an homage to my uh, instructor, uh, mentor, um, uh, who was Whiskey 8, Echo Echo Yankee. And I had his call for a while, and then I changed it to four call because I'm here in four land. But yes, uh, that's a great way to, to keep uh, the spirit alive. All right, someone identified only as the uh, letters KSL. KSL, if you, that sounds like you, if you'd unmute and come on in. I uh, don't know how to get my picture up, but it's you, right it, here. It, it came up. We see you. Huh? We see you. Okay, good. Um, I'm Karen Langdon. Uh, recently moved to Greenville, South Carolina, from Austin, Texas. I grew up hearing all about the FCC because my father was a communications lawyer, but didn't get into ham radio end of things uh, until I married a ham and um, have been hearing about it for years and years. Um, I'm trained as a first responder after 9-11 and am interested now that I'm retired to get my license so I can um, be of greater community service. Well, wonderful. And, and is your husband a member of any of the local ham radio clubs? Yes, everyone he can get to. Is he, is he a member of the Greer Club? Yes. Uh, yes. Well, both Dave and I know him then, because both Dave and I are in that club. In fact, the next yeah. meeting is this coming Monday. Will you be there? Um, I have not gone to any of those. Well, come on along. Gone. Both Dave and I will be there. You can, uh, okay. we'll, we'll have what they call an eyeball QSO. He's N5CQ. Oh, yes, yeah. Tom, right? John. Don, John, John, okay. Please, tell John you're coming to the Greer meeting on Monday, okay? Yeah. All right, Thanks. wonderful. All right, uh, Mary Ann Sherwood, you're up next. Please come on in. Okay, can you hear me? Hear you all loud and clear. Okay, very good. Uh, Mary Ann Sherwood, I'm coming from Colorado, around Colorado Springs. Um, there was a group here that they got together to try and help each other if there were any problems, and they had recommended getting a ham radio license, which I had never heard of. So I put it off, put it off. My husband went in and he got his and he got all three levels. So he he pushed me into it. So 
that's why I'm here. So I have it for, in case of emergency, basically. Well, we're so happy to have you here. And yeah, we'll, we'll get you energized in the hobby. It's, it's a lot of fun. And it's a great group of people. Uh, so yes, I, I, I th yes. think you're going to have fun. All right. Somebody uh, identified as Mr. Visitainer, if I'm reading that correctly. Come on in. Hi, my name is Chad. I'm in New Jersey. Um, what got me thinking about getting my license just to be prepared if I need it. And that basically it. I was a computer technician for 10 years, but recently lost my job. Well, we'll give you some uh, th things to occupy your mind and your time and uh, hopefully uh, uh, give you the motivation to not only get your, your license, but also if you want to look for another job, we'll, we'll help you, wh whatever we can do. But great to have you with us. Thank you. You bet. All right. Uh, let's see. Steve uh, Crago, I believe it is. Uh, please unmute and come on in. Hi, my name is Steve Crago. Let me turn my... Uh, I'm, we got you. We, we see you. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Um, I learned about. I'm, I'm from Central Texas. I learned about ham. I, I was in a prepper group, but I have since uh, quit from that last year. I I got up to the point where I bought my radio. I got a, a DMR six X two, Balfang, and um, recently I started getting involved in the Central Texas CERT team, uh, civilian emergency response team. I'm also a retired combat medic, so that's how I got involved in that. And uh, it's going to be very helpful. I've already connected with the repeater club in my local town. So that's why I'm here. Wonderful. Well, great to have you with us. Uh, Steve Summersell, am I pronouncing that correctly? Uh, you're up next. Steve, if you would just go ahead and unmute Steve Summersell. Uh, maybe he's away from his device at the moment. Okay. Um, Sue. He's trying to unmute himself. Okay. We see his video. Oh, well, we saw somebody's video. I wasn't sure that was him. Steve, you want to try? Okay, Steve, I guess your video is on, but your audio is not. You're still muted. No, we'll, we'll move on. Sue, Sue, you are up next, please. Susan? Earth to, uh, yep, okay. <laughs> Just looking down, making sure I'm still on, on here. Yeah, okay. All right, uh, Tony Johns. Tony, help us out. Unmute and please uh, say hello. Hi, my name is Tony. I'm in the Houston area. I've been interested in radios since I was in the Army. Uh, doing this to get my license so we can maintain communications amongst our group throughout Texas. And I'm looking forward to learning as much as I can. All right, super duper. I see Steve unmuted. Uh, Steve, uh, come on in. Hey, uh, guys, Steve Summersell. Uh, obviously, I need <laughs> more help than I know. I can't unmute the thing. Um, I'm here on the Alabama Gulf Coast, and uh, like Miss Becky, we, you know, when we have storms, there's a great possibility we could lose uh, regular communication, cell phone, and whatnot. So I want to have uh, something set up where I can reach out and communicate with friends and family and help others uh, do that too so they could uh, keep in touch with everyone. Very good. Well, happy to have you aboard. Um, so, Sue or Susan, um, one last time. No, here I am. Sorry about that. Sure. I accidentally turned on my video. I did not want that on <laughs> this time. Hi. Hey, everybody. Nice to meet you guys. I'm in the group with Carol and Angela and April and Becky. And I'm from Southern California. I just moved back here after being gone to Maui for 12 years. And I had become interested in prepping while I was on Maui because we had hurricanes and, you know, some things going on there. Oh. But, uh, you know, yeah. I'm here now. Shut me and, up. Uh, 
And Thank I really you. want to communicate and help. I can barely people. hold my arm up. <laughs> okay, when we get done, please unmute yourself if you would. Not, Sue, you're fine, but um, uh, when okay. you talk, it, it comes over to you. Um, uh, go ahead, Sue. Oh. oh, pardon me. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you just fine, yeah. Okay, cool. I have a, a, a DLR66 to a Baofeng, and I've taken it out of the box and uh, <laughs> charged it up. Uh, you know, I'd like to participate in the area in terms of emergency help. If someone, you know, if we can communicate when possibly things are not available in terms of other communication. So, and it's a useful hobby, absolutely. I did go over to Sherwood. There's an area here that had the uh, annual meeting and I met some people there. And I'm really happy that you're offering this class. I, I'm really excited about that, and I thank you very much. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's, it's our way to, to give back to the hobby. All right, did I miss anyone? Is there someone who we haven't heard from? Just go ahead and unmute. All right, I don't see anybody. Dave, did you have any final thoughts? No, no, I'm, I'm very impressed with people's motivations for wanting to get licensed, so this is going to be a really good group. Absolutely. All right, I'm going to push the other button over here. So you just see me, then I have to go over here to the switcher and make sure that uh, I push that button there. Okay. So tonight, uh, we're just going to have an abbreviated session. I appreciate you all with your inter introductions. It's great, uh, and we'll get to know each other better uh, as we go through the class. Um, I'm, I'm kind of uh, happy that uh, a lot of people have said that you know the class goes for 10 weeks uh, and when the class ends I've had a number of people say oh I didn't want it to end <laughs> so that's that's kind of cool but anyway so um, let's get started um, I want to share with you some videos if uh, that button will be pushed these are uh, videos from YouTube which I've uh, put here into the uh, presentation uh, just to, to make it uh, uh, easier to watch. Um, and um, you'll get a copy of this presentation as a PDF file. Uh, we will be sending you links, but I want to I want to share with you Ham Radio Then and Ham Radio Now. So here's Ham Radio Then. Massive and expensive equipment marks the professional radio station. But in the amateur field, radio parts often include pieces of assorted junk ingeniously assembled by operators who are called hams and who take up broadcasting as a hobby. Cards to prove long distance contacts are exchanged by the hams and proudly displayed. Jimmy Mulligan here has lots of cards and lots of strange radio parts such as whiskey glasses mounted on a cake tin. Ma's funnel actually becomes a loudspeaker, and her sieve, part of a microphone. Winding a coil becomes comparatively simple when using the family egg beater. And so, while radio's youth is being served, it's cramping Ma Mulligan's culinary style. No end. Well, chow is about ready, so it's time to get the hard-working Mulligan family together. Call Jimmy. Call Jimmy. Call Jimmy. Call Jimmy. Well, I guess that means you, Grandpa. And so Jimmy is called. But shh. Grandpa, Jimmy's practically in a trance right now, so don't interrupt. All amateurs are heroes of the air at heart and dream of a chance to serve humanity or to save lives. It does happen, you know. For instance, in far-off Alaska some years ago, Clyde DeVinna, prominent movie cameraman, devoted long winter evenings to his amateur radio set. Frequently, he talked over a span of 15,000 miles to a lonely lighthouse keeper in New Zealand. Although a great distance separated them, the two amateur operators exchanged gossip nightly and soon became radio buddies. One evening, alone in his cabin, DeVinna became weak. Deadly vapors from a leaky stove were the cause. A few minutes later, when Davina's conversation ended abruptly, the lighthouse keeper tried to renew the contact. With all windows locked against the freezing weather, Davina's ebbing strength was going rapidly. 
Finally, realizing that some strange overpowering force was clutching his life, he managed to repeat the cry of help. Help. In answer help. to his friend's cry of distress, help. the lighthouse keeper called the emergency signal, Mayday, Mayday. And so, everywhere within hearing of his voice, operators ceased broadcasting and stood by. With the air lanes now silenced, he called for any amateur operator stationed in or near Teller, Alaska. Near Teller, Alaska. Teller, Alaska. Thus, from a fellow ham over 15,000 miles away, a youthful amateur in Alaska learned that he might yet be able to save the life of a neighbor. Briefly, the lighthouse keeper told his story. And the youngster at Teller lost no time in phoning a doctor living near Davina's cabin to rush to the cameraman's aid. And so, due to the efficiency and quick thinking of radio hams, Clyde Davina is alive today. But getting back to the Mulligan family, Jimmy's still missing. Call Jimmy. Call Jimmy. Call Jimmy. Oh dear, Grandpop's missing now too. Well, she'll get him. What's this? Shh. Now they're both in a trance. Perhaps they're listening to another dramatic radio episode, like the story of courage and service of Wilbur Crane, an amateur operator who flew far out over the Atlantic in search of a missing plane. Crane's pilot. Radio Ham Crane had volunteered to make the search for the missing ship in his own plane. Amateurs all along the coast were standing by to pick up progress of the search. Ship radio professionals listened, ready to go to the rescue. Tensely listening to his reports too, and worried for his safety, were Crane's wife and son. For hours, the uneventful search continued, and then... in a bad storm, far out at sea, but the search goes on. anxiety and fear made minutes seem like hours. Weekly, the dots and dashes continued to come in, but the words they spelled out offered no encouragement to Crane's wife and boy. Then, as suddenly as they flew into it, Crane came out of the battering storm, sailing smoothly into the dawn, and as the visibility cleared, a miracle happened. For there, right below them, by a streak of rare luck, was the missing seaplane with possible survivors. Crane flashes the news. Safely out of the storm, the missing plane found. Never had a happier message come over the Crane loudspeaker. The broadcast of the ship's location, their job would be over. But what's this? Hundreds of miles at sea, and their gas practically gone. They hadn't a chance. But Crane's chief concern was to establish the location of that wrecked plane and broadcast the news to the world. Somehow, their plane must be kept in the air until this work was done. Unaware of this new danger, thousands waited to pick up the report that would send rescue ships to the missing plane. But to the wife, there came a premonition of some new peril that cast its shadow over her husband. goes 
on the air. And so, with the conclusion of the report, came the crushing news of their fate. And thus, two heroes once again preserved the finest traditions of the amateur radio fraternity. The radio message picked up by a ship made possible the rescue of those for whom Crane and his pilot had made the supreme sacrifice. Little wonder that to Jimmy and to thousands of others like him, the amateur radio offers continuous inspiration to render aid in times of stress. Whenever a calamity occurs, the ham operator courageously and unselfishly comes to the service of the community. And speaking of calamities, well, take a look at Ma Mulligan's dinner. Boy, break out the bicarbonate. Now, Ma, remember your blood pressure. Take it easy now. Hmm, so that's the way it is, eh? Well, she'll tell him. That sounds like China. Wow, that's coming 5,000 miles on a homemade set. No wonder the Mulligans are thrilled. Through the genius of little Jimmy, they hear a man speak in far off China. In Chinese, that means that that's all for the night, folks. Yeah, good night. So there you have Ham Radio Then. Kind of cute. And here's Ham Radio Now. We live in an age of amazing technology. But for some people, just being a consumer of off-the-shelf gadgets isn't enough. If you're bored with this and looking for something more exciting, why not take a trip around the world at the speed of light? Delta Kilo 8 Lima Golf. This is Mike X-Ray Zero Sierra Sierra Whiskey. Okay, thank you, Frank, for coming back to my QRZ call. My name is Adam, as in Alpha Delta Alpha Mike. Alpha Delta Alpha Mike. Adam, Adam is my name. I speak we all love to communicate. Amateur radio takes you beyond being a mere gadget user. It challenges you by putting you in charge of the technology. The bit that always interested me in the amateur radio was always the construction. One of the big things I've been interested in constructing is uh, using the Raspberry Pi in amateur radio because it's a small single board computer. It has a lot of potential, a lot of opportunities. So we're building a radio uh, receiver. Okay. And so I'm just on the part which is the demodulator. This is a hobby with hundreds of different ways to have techie fun. Using this simple ham radio transceiver and a good antenna, you can talk to other amateurs around the world and you can do it from almost anywhere. I'm at a portable station. The radio signals you transmit travel around the world at the speed of light. No internet connection or mobile phone signals are needed. Just your own skills as a radio ham. I'm 11 years old and I'm about to do the foundation license here in England, over. I got into amateur radio really to get a greater understanding of technology. I spend so much time on my phone, on laptops and really have no idea how any of it works. It was a really, really welcoming experience for me, um, a really great community and really, really easy to actually do. In disaster situations, when normal communications are out of action, amateur radio still gets the message through, which is why many hams belong to organisations that train their members to provide emergency radio links when needed. I like the practicality of being able to 
send a message and know how to get something out to someone under your own steam, so kind of making it yourself. And I'm very interested in being able to do the electronics, being able to build things, being able to be self-reliant um, in communication. I think that's really interesting. It's great fun talking to other hands in unusual and sometimes exotic places around the world. And beyond. The International Space Station carries ham radio gear on board and there's always licensed amateurs among the crew to use it, such as Commander Doug Wheelock. Uh, I've really enjoyed using the ham radio and uh, talking to ham radio operators all over the world. Radio amateurs around the world also build and launch their own satellites and hams anywhere can use them for space communication experiments and of course to chat to each other. Golf 1 X-ray India Echo. Uh, Golf 1 X-ray India Echo, uh, Golf Bravo 1 Yankee Oscar Tango America afternoon, uh, 5 and 9. We're using SO50 which is an FM uh, transponder uh, satellite which was going over from uh, about west to north around uh, 70 degrees elevation. When computers and radios come together, there's a whole bunch of new opportunities for hands to connect by radio, sending text, transmitting pictures or real-time video, even displaying data from an amateur radio satellite orbiting the Earth. Mike 6, November, Yankee Kilo. CQ, 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 GB1, Yota. I got started in amateur radio because I'm a girl guide leader and I wanted to take up a hobby that I could do with my brownies. The interesting aspect of amateur radio is that you do learn how it works and um, you get to communicate with loads of different people, find out about different areas of the world. You learn a bit more about the science of how it works and you have a much more profound understanding of something, a technology that is going on all around you. In amateur radio, sport and radio fit together well too. I'll take another bearing in a minute because I don't trust that. These guys are trying to locate hidden radio transmitters, racing against each other and the clock. Amateur radio is a fantastic hobby for anybody who loves technology. I've only really been involved in the hobby for a really short amount of time and I've been speaking to people all across the world. It's a really, really inviting community. One minute you're speaking to somebody about amateur radio and it leads on to so many other discussions about other different technologies you may not have even thought of. So if you do get a chance, come and join us. So that uh, second video, a ham radio now as I call it, uh, was produced by the Radio Society of Great Britain. Uh, and there are um, national uh, amateur radio groups in uh, countries around the world. You'll learn a lot more about the organization uh, uh, of uh, uh, regulations and of the, of the groups. Uh, uh, but uh, it is a hobby that is in the world. And uh, it's, it's like no other. So I think uh, you're going to find some fun uh, in this hobby. So the reasons to get a technician license, that's what we're all here for, to, uh, is we heard it uh, from the videos and from uh, the introductions, emergency communications, um, being prepared, having a, another alternate means of communications. Uh, that's the primary. Model radio control, I didn't hear anybody say that, but you can actually use uh, higher power transmitters uh, when you're using an amateur radio license. There's new technical understanding. We all use uh, electronics uh, all day long, but do you understand what's going on? Well, maybe we'll shed some light uh, on some of that uh, as we go along. But the big thing is that uh, having a ham radio license is fun. Uh, you'll meet like-minded people, uh, people who are curious, like yourself, who, who want to know about things. Because remember, when you get your amateur radio license, you're not done. <laughs> you don't know everything. You merely have a license to learn and to go further and to actually begin building and transmitting and, and finding out what works. And we're going to come to the intermediate uh, level license, the general class, for long distance communications on the high frequency bands. Uh, the general class license gives you those additional frequencies. So to qualify for a technician license, you must pass a multiple choice test. Uh, it's 35 questions. Um, does anyone, I don't think so, uh, have an expired license? 
uh, so you can uh, get your license back, uh, maybe just by taking the technician test. Um, Morse code used to be a requirement for amateur radio. You had to know Morse code, uh, at least five words a minute for the, the basic license. That's no longer the case. And people were saying, well, then Morse code's going to die off. No, it's more popular now than it ever has been. Uh, and so if you're interested in Morse code, you can check out my YouTube channel, W4EEY, that's the name of the channel, uh, and there you'll find uh, Mel Robinson, uh, KN4GB, who teaches a beginning class uh, in videos and an intermediate class uh, for Morse code. And uh, Melvin and our own Dave Ivey are both instructors at the Long Island CW Club which is uh, an online organization which has a wonderful, wonderful program for learning Morse code. So just want to prompt that if, you, if you're at all interested. All right, get your glasses on. Here are some specifications. Here are all of the hams in the various states. And I just want to say there is close to 760,000 amateur radio operators in the United States as of last month. And I always used to be so proud to say that uh, the United States um, was growing where other places in the world were diminishing. Eh, not over the past six months to a year, we're actually starting to de decrease here. So Dave and I are doing our little thing here uh, to try to bring more uh, amateur radio operators uh, on the air. So it's two pages. These, these are the other uh, 50 states uh, where there's hams. You'll get a PDF of this so you can examine this closely when you get home. So we're going to be covering one chapter of the book each week. Chapter one, which is for tonight, is an introduction. There are no test questions covered in the chapter, but it has good information about how to use the book. Um, for next week, we want you to please read Chapter 2, Radio and Signals Fundamentals, before class. Uh, it's important if you can read ahead, please, because uh, then that'll help the, the, the lecture uh, make more sense. You are the key to your success. If you want your ham radio license, you'll get it. You're the motivation. That's the key. That's the secret ingredient. So this is the book. Uh, if you don't already have it, there's a, a, a quick link that you can go get it. The, the American Radio Relay League License Manual, 5th edition. Uh, if you're at home watching us on YouTube, uh, this is the book we work from, uh, and we'd uh, love to have you uh, play along uh, from home. This is the class schedule. Uh, we uh, start uh, tonight, actually, with the Chapter 1, and we'll be concluding uh, the 8th of November. That will be a test review session that we'll do together. And the target then is November of 2023. I want you to be thinking about taking your amateur radio exam uh, in November or before, if, if you feel ready. Uh, well, where do you take an exam? Where do you get this 35 question multiple choice test? Well, you find a, a local ham radio club, and generally they will have volunteer examiners that can give the test. So here's um, a website from the American Radio Relay League to find a local club. You can take a class online now. Yes, you can test online as well. And you can find those sessions here if you go to hamstudy.org stroke sessions. And go ahead and look out to the month of November and see what test sessions might be available and, and make an appointment. Having a target, having a date certain that you say, I'm going to get my, ex take the exam, I'm going to get my license on this date, really helps to motivate you. So the test is based on a question pool that, that is at least 10 times as big as the number in a single exam. So right now, 411 questions are in the technician question pool. You need to get 26 of the 35 right in order to pass. And as a supplement, uh, starting next week, we'll provide a PDF file after each class with test questions from that chapter and just the right answers, with the goal for you to associate uh, answer uh, with the, the question. Uh, some people like to study that way, others don't. It's there as a resource for you. And you can use other resources as well. There are apps for your phone uh, to study for the exam. Another ham, KE0OG, Dave Kassler, has videos uh, for each of the chapters in the ARRL book, and I'll be sending you links uh, to his videos. 
uh, and uh, you're going to get more than enough material to study uh, for the class. Uh, we're streaming these classes live uh, on YouTube, so if you miss a class, uh, life happens, don't drop out. Just go to the YouTube channel, watch the class you missed, and then come on back in, and uh, you'll be all set. Ask questions, communicate, email, text Dave or me uh, or your other students. The email addresses are in the clear. Uh, work together. Uh, Dave and I are your teaching team. You are the learning team, so work together. Uh, we think that American Radio Relay League membership is a good value, especially for the magazines. QST is their premier ham radio magazine, and it's great to get every month. Uh, but uh, the articles there will even teach you more than you can get out of the class, because once you get your ticket, your license, uh, it's a license to learn uh, having fun. And finally, just want you to know that uh, local ham radio clubs are always a good resource. Uh, uh, you heard me earlier tonight uh, uh, saying, please come to the Greer Amateur Radio Club. Um, that's a, a great uh, DX-oriented club here in the area. Uh, and uh, so find a club in your area uh, and go just sit in. You can be a guest. You don't have to be a member. Uh, just see if you like it. There are good clubs and there are bad clubs. Find a club that is simpatico with you, with helpful people, and that really will be a resource for you. As I mentioned, I got started listening. I was a short wave listener, uh, and uh, you too can listen to amateur radio transmissions. This is something I've never promoted before, but Broadcastify uh, is a website, uh, which is kind of like an online scanner, and you can look uh, in various locales, and you can find uh, local amateur radio repeaters that are being uh, put up on the internet, and you can listen to amateur radio transmissions, uh, the local transmissions. Or you may have a scanner at home. Uh, you can go to uh, radioreference.com. Uh, I'll try to include that in the email. Um, and you can find local frequencies for repeaters in your area, dial them into your scanner, and start listening. Uh, it's a great uh, opportunity for you to hear ham radio in action. If you have a, a shortwave portable with single sideband reception or a general coverage shortwave receiver, you can listen in the ham bands uh, and hear contacts. We always used to recommend this radio because it was so cheap. Uh, it, this original version is no longer available because it was discovered it could transmit outside the ham bands, which is probably not such a good thing. They have a new version, a UV17R, which I have one coming. Um, I'm going to evaluate and I'll let you know if it's a good radio. That radio is only $28. So here's a ham radio, your first ham radio, uh, that you could spend less than $30. And it's a real radio. It's a 5-watt uh, you know, radio for uh, VHF and UHF. A portable with single sideband capabilities. This one is recommended, the Texan 680. I had the predecessor, the 660, and they make a good radio. Uh, there's also the SDR Play RSP1A. If you, the price is no object, I think it's like $140 now. Uh, but this is a computer-based software-defined radio receiver that you can listen in on the ham bands. Um, or if you want to, you can just listen online. There are virtual uh, software-defined radios at these links. That If you can figure it out, you can tune them over to the ham radio bands and start listening for contacts. And when you do that, you can relate what we talk about here in the class with what you hear on the air. And you may hear something on the air that you've got a question about, so bring it to class, and we'll talk about it. For those of you watching on YouTube, uh, if you'd like to get on our mailing list for this class, just send me an email, w4eey at arrl.net, and say, Gary, I'd like to get on the technician class mailing list, the YouTube mailing list. And I'd be happy to put you on that, and that way you'll get all of the announcements and links for the class. So have fun, learn something, because ham radio is the best hobby in the world. So that's it. That's the class for tonight. Are there any questions from anyone before we go tonight? All right, hearing nothing, please read Chapter 2 uh, by next week. Uh, and uh, we'll do it again, 6.30 on uh, Wednesday evening. Let me say best regards in Ham Radio Talk, which is 73. 73 to you all. See you next week. 73. Aloha.
Ciao. Thank you, Gary. Okay, class is over. Class is over.